Hello guys and welcome back to yet another AMC video. I would like to lay out some of these figures for you, as well as examine the upcoming expiration of a very significant option not this week, but next. This week is rather unique in that the majority of option trading is centered inside the next dollar or two, which is similar to where we were a week ago. Thus, I believe this to be crucial, and it will also be a topic of discussion. I did receive some feedback on the previous video, which essentially stated the following. How am I to know? On March 14th, a vote against this proposition resulted in a brief and almost instantaneous squeeze. Also, I'd want to touch on a few other crucial aspects of the AMC stock market that you need to be aware of moving into this week. If this is your first time visiting the channel, click the like button and subscribe. Whether you enjoy making money, enjoy AMC, enjoy this community, or simply want to increase your net worth, this is the place to be. So without further ado, let's get down to business. So AMC, let's examine the option activity first, as that will be definite, correct? Something we know about the 14th of March, it is the most crucial item for AMC right now, and it might move the stock either higher or down. Yet, the eventual outcome of this vote remains unknown. We do know that if you receive a positive response that ANC shareholders gave its approval, incorporation of AMC and APE, as well as any other minor initiatives and ideas submitted in this vote, nothing will transpire until at least April 27. So you'll have some time, correct, if this response is negative. Well, we're going to discuss precisely how that would trigger the short squeeze as well as this week's option activity. Have a look at the stock tracker data first, just to get a general sense of the information presented here, because it will help you to understand what you are seeing. You presently have approximately 24,000 calls in the money and 93,000 calls out of the money. In the money puts are priced at 40,000 out, while money puts are priced at 133,000. So, it is not a significant option expiration in terms of numbers. And in comparison to next week, there will be 75,000 winning calls and 625,000 calls next week. There are 258,000 in the money wagers and 903,000 out of the money wagers. This week is minute in comparison. The majority of call option trading, however, is focused between the $6 strike and the $10 strike, and specifically between the $6 strike and the $8 strike. So, the $6 strike is profitable. Presently, you have approximately 8,500 open interest. At the 650 strike, there are 9,500 available positions. And at the $7 strike, which is currently slightly out of the money, AMC shares closed at $6.60 per share. You have almost 12,000 open interest positions. This has roughly 12 million shares. Now, the intriguing aspect of this is that when AMC broke above $7 a share last week and the week before, there was still a week or two till expiration. Some alternatives were more costly. So in theory, this is basically how it works, right? You must consider the break-even point. If you are purchasing these options, the $7 strike price is currently $24. Yeah, it's a $7 strike. Hence, if AMC completed the week at $7.24 per share, you would actually break even and make a profit by purchasing shares. Right. Thus, market makers must hedge out these options at a minimum price of $7.24 a share. Because if you win, the back end of this option would lose. Very simple, particularly if you've been on the market for a while. And you now understand how choices work. Prior to a week or two ago, these options likely sold for $50 or $50. $70 or maybe $100 or more. I cannot recollect what their objective was. In short, they were significantly taller. Thus, your break-even price for market makers was significantly higher. Hence, a significant number of these were presumably not hedged at all. Even with the 650 strike, they are currently selling for $40 per. Hence, theoretically, Market makers are not required to fully hedge the 650 strike with 9,500 and open interest until AMC is $6.90 per share. AMC is $6.60 per share. Thereafter, premiums will be significantly cheaper. Hence, you'll need to see significantly more hedging occur much more quickly, correct? If AMC come Tuesday, Wednesday, 
Thursday starts to break above $7 a share. Call it $7.20, $7.30. You're going to see a lot of instantaneous hedging, which could continue to drive up. Now, AMC 750 strike around 8,500 for open interest. At the $8 strike, there are around 8,600 open interest positions, followed by 3,370,000. 200 at the $9 strike and 1,700 at the $950 strike. Then, at the $10 strike, around 32,000 open interest contracts would control approximately 3.2 million shares. Even though there are not a large number of options expiring on Friday, many of them are either barely in the money or slightly out of it. And I believe it might give you or contribute to a potential $1, $1, $52 move to the upside. Now remember, let's not go too far ahead of ourselves. We have provided Jerome Powell with the congressional testimony, which will essentially be the most significant factor. Ultimately, when all the terror began in 2022, it was due to this exact cause. As a result, a great deal of this material will present a surprise. Today, I believe, is not the time for the Fed to continue dragging the economy into further sluggish territory. But at the same time, Inflation is beginning to rise again, and they must ensure that expectations are restrained and that inflation expectations do not rise. I expect there will be a fair bit of back and forth as a result of this, which could result in significant price movements on Tuesday and Wednesday. And that is the true wild card in this situation, as it is something we do not know. We do not know what Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell will say. We do not know whether this may force AMC to rise 20% or fall 10% in a single day. That is roughly what I anticipate. This might be a significant moment for the Fed in 2023, similar to what Jerome Powell did in 2022, in terms of setting expectations for the entire year. Thus, this is not new, correct? Fed Jerome Powell used the same congressional session in 2022 to establish the expectations that led to a 35% decline in the NASDAQ and a 22% decline in the S and P. So quite substantial. So let's discuss this entire vote. Right. And we had some folks in the previous video, which I strongly suggest you should watch if you haven't already. This is discussed in further detail and dissected in greater depth. There is always a possibility that you will not. And the same holds true for every type of investment. That concludes this video, gentlemen. Hopefully, you gained some knowledge. If you click the like button and subscribe to the channel, we thank you. We appreciate your watching. If you also wish to trade with me in real time, the upcoming stock market week will be really interesting. This should be done down below, connected within the description. Join the community, please. We appreciate your watching. Enjoy the remainder of your day, and I will see you tomorrow.